Hey guys, welcome to the top 10 programming languages to learn in 2017. Now, as I've said many times before, these types of videos tend to bring out the trolls and the fanboys, uh, people that have their own opinion and declare it as fact. So before we begin, I just want to clarify a couple things. So one, this is my opinion only. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone's entitled to one. You may or may not agree with my opinion or another person in the comments. And feel free to express your own opinions. Just please do it in a respectful way. And try to realize that not everyone thinks and learns the exact same way that you do. I know this is common sense for 99% of you, but uh, there's, there's always that 1% that just doesn't get it. All right, so this is a list based on my own experience and research. I've worked with most of these languages on this list, but for the ones that I haven't, um, I've done a ton of research and have also talked to people that do work with these languages daily. Um, so I'm not just pulling the info out of my ass. Uh, the languages in this list are going to be ranked by popularity, syntax, ease of use, things like that. All right, and what I'll be doing is just briefly explaining the advantages to each language. Uh, my suggestion to you guys would be to watch the video, do your own research, and then form an opinion of your own. And if you want to post your own list in the comment section, that's absolutely fine as well. All right, and lastly, this list includes languages of all kinds. We're not just talking about web development. We're talking about desktop apps, mobile applications, um, any kind of programming language. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first at number 10, we have Go, also known as Golang, which was created back in 2007 by Google, and it's become increasingly popular due to its simplicity. In fact, the team that created Go said that part of the motivation for it was from their frustration with the complexity of the C++ language. Go is a statically typed language. It's relatively fast, and not just programs built on it, but it also compiles code very quickly. Uh, Go is or has backed in concurrency support, meaning that processes can start, run, and finish simultaneously. It's also a garbage collected language, which means that uh, the developer doesn't have to worry too much about memory management. That stuff gets taken care of on its own. Uh, it's also a language for productivity, and the code is really readable. It has a rich standard library, and it even includes a fully working web server. I've used Go very briefly, but it's definitely something that I'm gonna get. I'm gonna use more and get into, and eventually create some videos and courses around it. All right, so for number nine, I chose the Rust programming language. Rust was actually the most loved language on Stack Overflow for 2016. It's a general purpose language that's used to create fast and secure applications, and it's aimed to create code that's memory safe, and it eliminates the creation of dangling pointers which are a certain type of memory error. It has to do with uh, deallocated memory and just some real nerdy stuff that uh, even I don't really understand. Uh, it also takes advantage of powerful modern multi-core processors. Uh, and Russell was designed in a way that it can, it can be used to create large client and server programs that run over the internet. And it's also a, a multi-paradigm language. It can be used uh, for writing procedural code or functional, object-oriented, um, and it's also used to, uh, to perform concurrent operations. Okay, so it's really powerful in that aspect. And it uses a self-hosted compiler called Rustic, which was developed by the Mozilla family. All right, so number eight is Swift. Now, Apple has basically moved away from Objective-C and moved towards Swift. It's proven to be a smarter language and... Uh, one that can create a more direct and meaningful connection between iOS developers and end users. Not only that, but Swift will also replace C, the C language, for embedded programming on Apple platforms. So obviously this language is specific to people that want to get into mobile app development with iOS. If you're a web developer and you already have a couple languages under your belt, maybe learning, moving to learn Swift may not be a bad idea. All right, Objective-C had a lot of issues with the, uh, with the apps crashing, and Swift code is far less uh, error-prone because of its support through manipulating text strings and data. All right, classes uh, are also not divided into two parts like they are with Objective-C. So you, you literally write less code than you would if it was Objective-C. Uh, let's see, Swift also supports dynamic libraries, which are executable chunks of code that can be linked to an app. 
So Swift apps can be linked to newer versions of the language as it evolves. Dynamic libraries are directly uploaded to memory, which cuts down on the initial app size and that can increase performance. All right, so number eight is Swift. So for number seven, I chose Ruby, which obviously is the language for the popular Ruby on Rails framework. Ruby is a, a dynamic, reflective, object-oriented, and general-purpose programming language. Ruby syntax is incredibly readable. In fact, I've seen code where I had to kind of do a double take because I thought it was just uh, written, you know, written English text. And that was one of the goals of the developer was to create a, a very readable syntax that's pretty close to the English language. Data structures are built into the language, such as arrays, lists, and stacks, compared to something like C where you basically have to rely on a library for these things or write your own. So as I just stated, Ruby is the language of Rails or Ruby on Rails, and that alone is a good reason to learn it, to learn Ruby. Rails has brought agility and, module, and a modular approach to developing web applications, and there's not too much that you can't do with Ruby on Rails. Um, the community, I, in my own opinion, I think has died down a little bit. Uh, if this were a couple years ago, I think Ruby would be a little further on the list, but um, all in all, it's a, it's a really good language, and uh, Rails is a really good framework for web applications. And of course, Ruby has its own uh, package manager and dependency management, and that's Ruby Gems. Uh, we can easily install and remove software and dependencies using Gems, and Ruby on Rails is actually a gem itself. All right, so I put C++ at number six, which is a general purpose programming language and was built on top of the C language. C++ is extremely powerful and high performance. It can be used to build system software, game engines, uh, desktop applications, as well as web applications. And the number of job postings mentioned uh, on Indeed.com in, I think it was the last year, in 2016, it grew by 20,000 postings. So there is a high demand for it in the workplace. C++ has imperative, object-oriented, and generic features that can be used for many things. Windows is largely written in C++, as well as some Linux uh, desktop environments such as KDE. C++ is also highly portable, and it's often the language of choice for uh, multi-device, multi-platform app development, and it has a very rich function library. So number five is C Sharp, which is a language that was developed for Microsoft's .NET framework. It can also be used on non-Windows machines with the release of the .NET Core open source development platform. C Sharp is also being used to power Unity, which is an incredible 2D and 3D game engine. C Sharp is also a pure object-oriented programming language, which allows us to create much more modular and reusable code. This is a huge advantage over C++. In C Sharp, everything is considered an object, even simple data structures. So C Sharp has a very strong memory backup. So having a memory leak in a C Sharp program, it's not as big of a deal as it would be in a lot of the other programming languages. And this gives C Sharp an edge. It also has a rich set of libraries. And as far as the learning curve, uh, it's not that steep, especially if you already know a language like C or C++ or, or even Java. All right, now this one I may, I may take some heat for. I put PHP at number four, and yes, it's a love or hate language. And this is a open source server side language that's used mostly for web applications. So love it or hate it, you can't really deny that PHP is used all over the place. It accounts for a huge percentage of websites and applications. I don't know the exact number, but I know it's pretty high. And even WordPress alone, which is a PHP blog and CMS, accounts for something like a quarter uh, of websites out there or something like that. Uh, PHP is a multi-paradigm language, meaning you can use procedural code, functional, object-oriented, and other methods of writing code. The amount of freedom can be a huge pro or a huge con, depending on the, on the developer. Um, that's one thing about PHP that really sucks is you can write some really horrible code and it will still work. All right, uh, another big plus to PHP is that it can be embedded right into the HTML code. Uh, as long as the file has a PHP extension, you can put PHP anywhere you'd like as long as it's wrapped in tags. 
It's also very easy to learn. I think a big part of that is due to how flexible it is. And again, this can be good or bad. It allows sloppy code to work, and that's really not a good thing. But either way, it's, it is really easy to learn. All right, uh, and one of the best features of PHP is how simple it is to deploy. You can pay five bucks a month for shared hosting and simply upload all your files. You don't need shell access. Uh, most hosting companies have PHP and MySQL pre-installed, so deploying is extremely easy. And then you also have uh, frameworks like Laravel, which is uh, probably, I would say, the best framework out there for PHP. And then you also have Cake PHP, Code Igniter, which is a uh, really easy to learn framework. So there's a, there is a lot going on with PHP. Uh, even in 2017. All right, so number three is Java. Java is a general purpose object oriented language. It's been around for quite a while and is extremely popular. Now, when it comes to finding a job in the programming world, learning Java will give you the most opportunity. It's ruled the job market for years now. And in 2017, the number of jobs on Indeed.com have risen by 30,000 posts. So that's pretty significant. And in addition to that, 90% of Fortune 500 companies use Java as a server side language for back end development. So Java is, is pretty much the official language for enterprise. There is a saying in the Java world, write once, run anywhere, meaning that compiled Java code should run on all platforms that support Java without having to recompile. Okay, Java applications compile to bytecode, which can run on any JVM uh, or virtual uh, Java virtual machine, unlike C and C++. All right. In addition to computer programs, Java is used on Android systems, so you can also have the benefit of learning mobile app development. Now, as far as learning Java, I wouldn't say it's easy, but I would say it's relatively easy if you compare it to other languages of its kind. Uh, it was it was pretty much designed to have a, a simple and no nonsense syntax. And finally, Java was built to be extremely robust and secure. Java puts a lot of energy on early error checking as the compilers are able to detect many different issues uh, that other language compilers would not detect beforehand. All right, so that's number three. Number of two is Python. Python is a general purpose language that focuses on productivity and it can be used for desktop apps, web apps, data mining, and much more, even robotics and, and uh, biometric stuff. Uh, I'm using Python a lot these days, and I really enjoy it. If, if I made this a few months ago, I probably would have put PHP above Python until I actually started to get into it. Uh, the syntax is very readable. It's clean. It's straightforward. I think it's, it's pretty similar to Ruby, in my opinion. Uh, much of it just looks like written English which makes it very easy to learn. And not only that, but I realize, I realize that you can do a lot with Python with a, a small amount of code. OK, uh, Python also has a huge standard library. It ships with things like XML parsers, uh, multimedia services, protocol support and a ton of other stuff. And as far as web development, I think Python uses one of the best web frameworks out there, which is Django. And I haven't done too much with Django yet on this channel because I'm rather new to it and I'm learning a lot about it. Uh, but I can create a basic CRUD application and and, uh, you know, implement authentication, stuff like that. Uh, Python also has the Flask framework, which is a micro framework, which I've worked with briefly, and it's pretty easy to catch on as well. Uh, Python has some asynchronous coding benefits, so rather than threading, we can use a single event loop to do work in small units. Uh, and like some other languages we looked at, Python is multi-paradigm. We can use procedural programming, functional, as well as object-oriented programming. All right, so we're down to number one. And if you've been keeping up with my channel and my videos, you probably already knew what number one was going to be. JavaScript is the programming language of the web and of the browser and now beyond. So it's absolutely everywhere. It's used in something like 90% of the web pages on the Internet. Uh, I would encourage everyone to learn JavaScript, even if you're not a web developer. Now we have things like Electron, which which can allow us to write desktop applications with JavaScript. We have React Native, Ionic, PhoneGap. These are all technologies that allow us to create mobile applications and, and hybrid applications using JavaScript and HTML and CSS. 
Node.js is an incredible server-side technology which acts as um, a JavaScript runtime. We also have NPM, Node Package Modules, which is a part of Node and uh, gives us a package manager so we can easily install software. Uh, JavaScript is continuously evolving with ES6 and now ES7. JavaScript has lots of missing pieces back in, um, if you look at the old ES5 and, and before that, uh, but that's all now coming together and it's being, all the missing parts are being put into these new, uh, these new standards of JavaScript. Okay, and then we have frameworks like Angular, React, Vue, and many other front-end frameworks, as well as back-end, we have Express. Um, so I can't say enough about JavaScript and where it's going to go from here. Uh, I would definitely suggest that all of you learn JavaScript, no matter what, um, what profession you're in. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this guide or this, whatever you want to call it, uh, countdown, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I'm sure that there's a lot of you out there that disagree with some of what I say or maybe even all of what I say. But, uh, you know, this is just my experience and my opinion. So try not to get too hung up on it. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.